Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. We're listening to you reading extracts from one of your books, My Dear Son, Colin, and this is all part of a series really about how to listen to God, because as you've listened to God, so you have written this book. And it seems to me that we just don't listen to God enough, because when we do listen, it clearly can enrich our lives so much. It does. I I spend, I suppose, the better part of an hour listening to God in the early morning every day. And that is really what has enriched my life and my ministry. Uh, And I just praise God for that because, you know, if you do take the time to listen, you will hear the voice of God. Uh, Of course, you can hear God every time you open your Bible and read because it is his word. But if the Spirit of God lives in you, then you can also hear what he is saying to you through his word and what he is saying to you by the Spirit because he always wants to encourage you and build you up and strengthen you in your faith and in your obedience. And, of course, you can get these books, My Dear Son, My Dear Child, from kingdomfaith.com. Today our first section is called My Word in You. And the scripture, Everything is possible for him who believes. My beloved, True spirituality is very practical. You don't live in me so that you can wander around in some kind of spiritual daze. Jesus was a man of prayer, but his ministry was intensely practical. Life for him was not continuous prayer meetings. He expressed his prayer of faith in a life of faith. He served people, taught them, cared for them, and healed them. Every day of your life, I live in you and you live in me so that things can happen. The supernatural life of my spirit can break into the practical circumstances of your life, and you can use my powerful resources to touch others' lives. You can try to find your own natural solution to difficulties, or you can pray with faith expecting to see my supernatural power at work. Which would you prefer? When Jesus told his disciples to feed 5,000 people, they looked at the situation from a natural standpoint. There was nowhere to buy food in such a remote place, and they didn't have sufficient funds to provide for so many. Jesus looked at the situation supernaturally with the eyes of faith. He prayed and acted in faith. Five loaves and two small fish fed all those people with an abundance remaining. Men try to rationalize such incidents, but it is impossible to contain the supernatural working of my spirit within the reason. You are learning to live each day in faith. There are still times when you rely on your natural abilities instead of my power, aren't there, child? I don't despair when you fail. You will learn that every time you trust in yourself, things seem difficult. When you trust in me, mountains of need are moved." and I am patient with you while you learn. Just as Jesus could do nothing by himself to accomplish my purposes, neither can you. As I worked with him, so I will work with you. I showed Jesus what I wanted him to do. I will do the same with you. There is no point trying to take the initiative away from me. You will only end up doing the wrong things if you do. Many of my children are impatient. They don't wait for me to show them what I want them to do. They rush around in a blaze of fleshly activity and then wonder why there is so little fruit. When they do what I want, the outcome is always profitable, both for them and for my kingdom. So, beloved, I want you to have my supernatural perspective on the situations you encounter. As you pray, listen to the voice of my Spirit. Let Him show you how to pray and tell you what you must do. You are able to hear his voice, for he lives in you. Those who are led by my Spirit are my sons. And you know beyond doubt that you are indeed my child. A Servant Heart Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 
After the Transfiguration, Jesus journeyed to Capernaum with his disciples. He could overhear their conversation. When they arrived at their destination, he asked what they were discussing on the way. They were embarrassed by his question, and at first no one wanted to answer. They were questioning who among them was greatest. Beware of the temptation of thinking that the experiences you have in prayer make you more important than others. Do you see why he instructed them not to tell anyone what had happened on the mountain until he had ascended to glory? Nevertheless, it was tempting to think they were better than the others because of the great privilege granted to them. Jesus made it clear that the greatest in my eyes are the servants of all, those who have a sober estimate of themselves, regardless of the experiences they have, the privileges accorded them, or the great ways in which I use them. Imagine walking along with the Son of God and arguing about who is greatest. The principles of my heavenly kingdom are very different from the principles of the world. Worldly people consider the greatest to be those who have most material possessions or natural abilities, those who are famous and envied by others. The greatest in my kingdom are those who lovingly, obediently, and faithfully serve me by loving and serving others. They don't look for praise. They don't want fame. They are not interested in a worldly reward for their work. To know they serve the King of Kings is reward enough. Jesus came as the one who served. He washed the disciples' feet and made it clear they could not be one with him unless they allowed him to serve them. They had to learn that servants also need to be served. Some of my children want to serve others, but they don't allow me to serve them. Neither are they good at allowing others to serve them. A true servant will be humble enough to receive from others as well as give to them. Remain humble before God and man, my child. Let me serve you by cleansing you and giving to you. Then go in my name to love and serve others in the same way I love and serve you. Even though I use you in ways that are a blessing to others, keep a servant heart, rejoicing to live for others and not for yourself. Your reward will be great in heaven. Follow me. And the scripture, anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. If you seek to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for the sake of the gospel, you will find it. Those who try to hold on to their lives, their time, ambitions, or money for themselves, deny my lordship over every area of their lives. Your soul is eternal, but not your possessions. Beloved, if my kingdom is first in your life, you appreciate that you only live for me by living for others. Your love for me is expressed in the way you live for the other members of my family. Your love for me is shown to be genuine by the way you love others. Don't concentrate on others' inadequacies and failures. Instead of criticizing them, pray for them and encourage them. I don't criticize you. I encourage you to walk in my ways. I want all my children to love and accept one another. I want them to demonstrate to the world a love and unity that cannot be found anywhere except within my family. The work of my kingdom is so vital, there is no time for my children to squabble amongst themselves. I want them to respect and honor one another, to unite in my purpose of making me known to others. 
I have given my Holy Spirit to create such unity in my church. So don't worry about the cost of following me or what the future will hold for you. I give you this assurance. If you give your life to me for the sake of my kingdom as the priority in your life, laying down your life for your brothers by living for them and not yourself, then everything you need will be added to you. You will not have to worry about what to eat or wear. You will not need to be anxious about the future, but can trust my promises to provide for you. Beloved, I am faithful and will keep every word of promise I have given you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will guard you and keep you as the apple of my eye. Father, we thank you so much that you live in us by the power of your Spirit. Thank you that you want us to have those servant hearts that we allow you to serve us, yes, and we allow others to love us and give to us. That we are happy to serve others, no matter what the situation or what the need. Thank you, Lord, that in the ways in which we treat others, we treat you. What we do for them, we do for you. What we don't do for them, we don't do for you. So we thank you that you want your love to be expressed through us that you want your servanthood to be expressed through us. You want your grace to be expressed through us and your mercy so that we continually forgive and do not judge. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. If you'd like a copy of My Dear Son used by Colin in today's programme, please visit kingdomfaith.com forward slash resource centre.